possible? No, I don't trust when people say God called them to do X or Y or Z. I just, I mean, I, I believe in God, so I have no problem with that. I, right. I understand God, I believe in is transcendent, eternal, uh, right. he created the world. Right. He's communicated to us through the Torah and that he has moral demands on us. Um, but so, then they must be referring to something else. If, if no, they, they believe in the same God. They, they just believe that that God spoke into them. And I'm considerably more skeptical. Yeah, I mean, the only then the only joining point to me would be the Eastern traditions that say those are actually the same thing, that your inner wisdom is the same as the transcendent God. But, mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah, I'm so, okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, continue, did you have a... Uh, so I was, was going to go off on, on something else. Yeah. Um, chapter 12, verse 17, but uh, God afflicted Pharaoh with severe plagues because of the matter of Sarai, the wife of Avram. So um, the, the art scroll stone Kumash commentary, but Hashem afflicted God, smote Pharaoh and his household with a debilitating skin disease that made cohabitation impossible, thus assuring that Sarah's chastity would be safeguarded. Oh, this, okay, this is after Abram pimps his wife. Yeah, well, he, he doesn't pimp her, he says that she's my sister. Right, but he's and and she she was his sister. She was also his wife, but he didn't mention that. Right, he was it was a it was a lie of omission. He was misrepresenting right, right, who right, she was. Right, right, right. Okay, so but what do you make of of that? Of that? Um, so like if if assuring Sarah's chastity is is chastity chastity is not the same as virginity. So right, it's right. Not, no. Okay, so if like if God struck you with debilitating skin disease that made cohabitation impossible. Would you thank God for preserving your chastity, or would you? How would you react? <laughs> no, I, I would react. <laughs> how would I react? I, I would. I would be unhappy about that. No, I wouldn't thank God for preserving my chastity, because He's not preserving my chastity. I have to preserve my chastity. If if someone else does it, they're just castrating me, and so that's what I guess God has done. He's not preserved the chastity. He's, he's castrated. Uh, Pharaoh. I figured you'd lack the faith to see the divine hand. <laughs> well, <laughs> you'll lose some skin disease. No, but they're saying like if you got a bad case of gonorrhea, would you <laughs> would you say this is God's gift to me so that I? No, because I've seen I I had a urology rotation. I've seen what happens to people with gonorrhea. They put you under and they take what's like a harpoon because you get uh, urethral strictures and they take like a harpoon and throw it up your penis. I, I don't want that. I wouldn't thank God. God needs to let me make my own decisions. I'm going to anyway, but like, this is not, that's not a favor, that's a, that's, that's, that's so someone else deciding Like that disease might have prevented you from sin. Well, but, okay, but fine, but then that sin was what uh, was going to happen and that I could grow from. But at least I would be growing from mistakes made of my own volition, rather than, than Big Papa, like, at the, you know, just kind of keeping me safe. Like, it's just... It's just not the life I'm interested in. I wish Monica and Helen were here, because I'd want to know what they would think if they'd been struck with a debilitating skin disease that made cohabitation impossible. Would they regard that as a gift from God? Well, no, because for, the, for Monica and Helen, in their cases, cohabitation is unthinkable outside the bounds of matrimony. So it's just like, they're like, why would I need to be protected from that? It's just, it's just not in their nature. Right, right, right. But, but I... I, I what really strikes me about this is that it seems like if this is the commentary, God smote Pharaoh with a skin disease. Actually, what the rabbis are doing is they're trying to get Abram, Avram, off the hook, because it's not an attractive thing for a man to mm -hmm. say to misrepresent his wife as not his wife, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that she can get humped by the locals. Um, um, uh, that's that's, and so the the rabbis are kind of saying, well, but he didn't really. Nothing bad was going to happen. She wasn't actually going to have to hump the locals just because of Ram uh, denied she was his wife. No, that, that is, what, I mean, BS, I don't believe it. I mean, if, if, if he went in there and he was like, damn, my wife is hot and, uh, and I'm not a man of power in this place. No, then she, 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 she Pharaoh and her were, were, were making love. Like, that's what happened. I, I had sympathy for Abraham. I mean, I, I think that uh, I would have done the same thing. Because, I mean, I wouldn't want to die. And I would rather die. Like, it's better that my wife sleep with the Pharaoh than I die. That's what I say.
Well, if she wants to sleep with the pharaoh, genuinely. Well, better but, but, even if she doesn't want it. Better that she have to sleep with someone she doesn't want than me die. I don't want to die. I got so much to give to the world. And uh, yeah, what Torah talks. <laughs> but death is preferable to. Uh, uh, I think death is preferable to to certain to certain things. It's not dishonor. Yeah, it is dishonor, but it's dishonor. It's not a public social dishonor. It's it's an internal dishonor. I I love my wife. I. Um, you'd rather you'd rather die. I would not rather die than have her, her have an affair if that's what she wanted to do. But, re but for, if I was with her and I said to my wife, you know Say what, baby, you like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hump some of these guys just to like get me some space, you know, like, like, Say I would rather, die, I would rather die than that because you I would, would rather I'm, die than ask your wife to hump someone she didn't want to hump. Uh, yes. Wow. I mean, I wouldn't because I wouldn't want to live in the after. What, what would I be living for in the aftermath of that? I would have no respect for myself. And I just, it's just, yeah. That's powerful. That's powerful. Uh. <clears throat> and it's true, baby. <laughs> no, it is, it is, it is true. And she probably wouldn't even believe me if I said that, but it, but it is, it is true. So, so God lays some pretty heavy stuff on Abraham right here from the beginning. Uh, I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Sorry. Yeah, continue. And those who curse you, I will curse. And all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you. So, yeah. So, that's some pretty heavy stuff that he's... Uh, I, sorry, I'm just turning this off. Yeah, well, he's making... It, it is interesting because he's giving Abram a... Uh, He's asking something. Lech lecha is not an easy command to follow. He's right. he's asking him to um, to leave everything he's ever known, all the safety, all the um, all the reward, rewards and treats of, of what he's ever known, um, for what's either a call from God or what's or what or what his own self is telling him. And he it's so he's offering incentives. He's saying the rewards of of, of this adventure will be massive and beyond anything you can imagine in your current life so uh, it's it's um it's not surprising i guess just that that that, that god would be throwing all sorts of rewards uh at avram because avram was the change agent avram was the uh the first cause but yeah so this is what one rabbi says uh this is the basic contract by which the chosen people um, are created. Two things are spelled out. The Hebrews will be watched over by God. Those nations who are the Hebrews' friends will be blessed and the, their enemies will be cursed. Uh, if you look at history, that's pretty much come to pass. Interestingly, the contract does not promise to save us from any harm. It just tells us what is going to happen to others. I guess it always pays to read the fine print. <laughs> right. And then there's another powerful paragraph. Then it spe spells out the duty which goes with this chosen status. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed, which means simply you'll have to work for this. You'll have to work to make yourself useful to the world. It, it, it's, uh, the thing is, though, you think this has come to pass? I mean, the interesting thing to me is that it seems not to have come to pass. The, the, the promise that he gives that Hashem gives Avram is that go forth on this journey into the unknown, away from everything you've ever known, um, uh, and towards the things you fear, and I will be your shield. My awesomeness and my might and, and, and a third thing um, will protect you from, from damage and, and pain. But there's that nothing in here, there's nothing in here about him being protected he's, from damage or pain. No, he's, no, he says he's the shield of, uh, of Abraham. I will be your shield. He offers to be, uh, sorry, I have to find the verse, but he's, he says that he will, the shield of Abraham, that's, that's, that's in Lech Lecha. It's nothing about <laughs> protecting him from pain. No, no, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm projecting into the text. He offers to be the shield of the, his shield, or he says he will be his shield in this journey. And the rabbis, uh, in the Talmud, actually, in, in uh, I forget which tractate, because there's a big uh, uh, ha discussion on this, and it says aw awesomeness might and, and something else, because then what they say is the Jews were so angry, the Hebrew prophets were so angry, that, for example, Jeremiah refused 
to acknowledge the, God's awesomeness because Gentiles were dancing in the Holy of Holies. So he wouldn't call God, uh, he wouldn't talk about God's awesomeness. And Daniel was so upset 